two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is The Game Block. We're joined once more by Roxas for some Stellaris. And he did a oh. thing. Uh, and, oh, God. Last episode, the brain fart was an absolute just... Ugh. <laughs> Had a good giggle. Anyway, you've got a little eye thing next to uh, Gatria. What does that mean? Yeah. I have an observation post. Okay, what does that do? Uh, an observation post is uh, you placing um, a, a, like an observatory uh, to a planet that has a less intelligent species. Like um, people that is in the Bronze Age, Machine Age. Basically people that cannot uh, fly outside of their own system yet. Ooh. Okay. So you um, kind of have some interactions with them. Yep. Or you can help them by you then trying to understand the society and maybe even try to uplift them to the modern age. Sure. You can do this through various means. You can either do it through conquest or you can do it through enlightenment, whereby you then infiltrate their. Um, you can also yeah infiltrate their government and trying to make them more susceptible for you to take them over. Okay. You can try and uh, make them uh, into a vessel uh, by um, basically giving them this uh, land and stuff, but you but they then become under you. Yep. And a lot of these kind of stuff you can give them. The, one of the uh, other advantages for them is uh, you gain uh, society research out of them. Ooh. Yes, and there's two different ways. There's uh, aggressive and passive. Um, aggressive gives more society research, but yep. it can give some worse uh, effects. In worst case scenario, you will either end up making them uh, quicker to excel to a uh, space age, or you will make them so they, they will never become uh, uh, evolved from their current uh, age because you uh, destroy their society so badly. Oh. So ba basically, still, yeah. basically, you've got you've got two choices. You can either become a benevolent overlord, or you can just basically screw them over. Yes, or you can just uh, be there, watch the watch over them, uh, get some society until they're done. Which I, I'm, uh, and they can actually uh, by themselves uh, evolve into a space age. Yep. You just ah helping, yeah, yeah okay. So I, I found them as well. We've detected the presence of a pre-space alien civilization on the Valam in the Gatria system. Atmospheric con contaminants and light pollution visible from Auburn are consistent with a densely populated machine age society. They appear to have mastered air travel and factories are mass producing goods in their cities. We should consider building an observation post above their world to study them more closely. Yes. Um, I, and that's can I build an observation post there or not really because it's your it's in your territory? It's in my territory. You need to have it in your territory which is why I built the other Right. Route, which of the country tier post there. If you look in the, I don't know if you can see it uh, in the multi uh, regime, but they also have a, um, yep, have a species, but they haven't done anything with it. Yep. And this one is also in the machine age, ironically. And uh, if you want, we can go to war, and then you can gain that land, so you can try and uh, interact with them. You can hear I like wars. I'm actually just dealing with some stuff right now. I'm trying to kill some shit. I think I might build a frontier outpost in Sheet. In <laughs> Sheet? Uh... Between Tibor and Elfiel. It expands my borders in that general direction. I may gain access to Samdran, which would be really, really nice. But brings... Uh, she, she would be too close to your border. Really? Yes. I, I Yeah, I really do need stuff, but at this point, I... Uh... Be a bit more aggressive and take, like, Lissvold. Lissvold, yep. I would recommend you more, because that has an 11 size or plan or solar system with 11 systems. Where, where am I looking for? 11. Lisvald. Oh, Lisvald. Like, oh, all the way up there. Okay. Let's 
stop. I need to stop that one then. I say let's go to Lishval. Build a frontier outpost all the way out there. Um, before we get that happening, I need to go and build the spaceport outside of Alpha Centauri because reasons. Right. Goddamn idiots. I, I just got an event there. I lost some of my cruisers. What did I lose my cruisers for? I lost like three cruisers. Crap. That's not supposed to happen. Yeah. And also, speaking of the benevolent stuff, I just got an event, event where I could nuke uh, my, uh, my, my um, pre FTL uh, civilization. Oh? Because, because they were apparently in a nuclear war trying to uh, nearly destroy themselves. So I could Lovely. just say, I'm done Lovely. with this, destroy them all. Or you could say, let them be. Yeah, fair and enough. Maybe they would destroy yeah, themselves. They luckily didn't destroy themselves, even though they're big idiots. Big idiots. <laughs> Who else would uh, go into a nuclear war? Yeah, 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 fair enough. Um, I said, another destroyer. I need, I need more mineral production. I really do. Um, so basically, when I when I get obviously like terraforming and stuff, I can maybe try get the Tomb World Elfior under my control, and that will expand my borders out in that direction. Uh, no, you need a uh, restoration for the, for um, climate restoration for Tomb Worlds. Yeah, because they are basically. A world that has been nuked to the uh, ground. Right. They are so inhabitable that the only thing they can live there is cro cockroaches. Yep, fair Quite enough. literally. And I just got the most bugged event there in the game. Yep. Uh, basically, uh, it gives you an almost infinite amount of uh, result of uh, either science or uh, energy credits. Yep. Oh. See. All right. So once once you build sectors and stuff, they basically get like their own AI control, essentially. That's yeah. cool because it's like, it's like I'm looking at so all my stuff is like green and all this and it's like so who are these blue guys? I had I had no idea. Now I know. And that they build like military stuff and what have you. Because yes. he's he's like already built. He's already built a spaceport outside Cirrus Prime, and I don't have to do anything. Oh, that's great. I, mean, I can still build stuff, but... Oh man. Six hundred nineteen for this goddamn cruiser. Yuck. These are materialists. I need to convert them to the right faith, which is another thing you also can do with um, with uh, these um, lesser species. You can yeah. try and correct yeah. their uh, correct in rotation because everyone would say correcting uh, when they change uh, people's um, behavior to their own. 
Okay. But basically, I can I can uh, change the effects to um, look a little more like mine. By that's good, right? Other than those. Yeah, because then they are more like you, and then they will be more happy in your empire. Cool. Oh yeah, that's the thing I forgot. I just gained the battleship. I'm building one. It takes me a few. It takes me about a year to make. God damn it, dude! <laughs> you are so far ahead of tech. That's crazy. I've only just gained antimatter missiles. That's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, we need to declare war on these guys. Yep. I think I'm... I'm going to start... Multix has declared war on Evandaria again. No, this is Multix. Before it was the uh, Pokemon... Interstellar Pokemon. Uh, oh, Pokemon. right. Okay, so... Yeah, now that they're both overwhelming... The fleet power is overwhelming yeah. compared, equivalent compared, and superior. Wow, that's just, that's ridiculous. Yikes. I need... Yeah, he's uh, also overwhelming to me, so yeah. I need, Not... more, I need more cruisers. I don't have, I can't build, I don't have enough, um, I don't have enough mineral generation to be able to do anything. This is ridiculous. All right, um, with the sectors, do they actually take your resources as well? Um, no, um, you, yeah, they take the resources in the sector. Oh, joy. But you can, uh, but in the, um, sector management, uh, screen, uh, F5, you can, uh, tell them how much they, uh, should take of each of the resources. Okay. So, sector management. So, with the Cirrus system... Where is that? That's under something. Oh, what is it under? Planets and sectors. F5. Sector settings. Did you just send minerals, dude? Also, you have been uh, prioritizing building a uh, psionic building or building unity buildings, right? Currently giving us 50%. Uh, sure, 75% of the minerals from those sectors we need. Good. I was wondering why my sector, my um, mineral generation just went down the absolute toilet, because, ugh. No, this is something I probably shouldn't do because I need more and oh I cannot even do it now so sure hmm. all right obviously sectors will all, uh, they'll, they'll build all of their own like soldiers and what and what have you as well so yeah which, which is nice because I don't think I had any soldiers on Cirrus Prime and I believe now yep it's it's the AI has created a defense army for that planet it's nice and they've got like their own fleets and things as well that's really cool yep they will treat it like it's a real yeah now I just gotta make my cruisers cheap so I can actually build them I gotta build the buggers and I just they did something uh, special. Oh yeah. I did. I took a uh, mines over matters. Uh, Perks uh, said that is one of the free uh, lines, or spe special uh, lines, in the uh, ascension thing you can do. Okay. For this um. One, yeah. Uh, oh, one of, one of the perks. One of the perks, right? Yeah. This one there uh, basically is psionics. Yeah. I did. I did get. I did start getting. Um. I did start doing Sonic Theory in my society tab. Yeah. 
uh, I would Myron's recommend... display psionic potential. Latent psionic powers have begun to manifest in certain individuals belonging to the Myron species, according to leaked reports from authorities in the Forgotten Land. Yes. Cool. Soon they I will be able to do telekinesis and this stuff. And, oh. uh, later on... <laughs> and later on, I, uh, I can do something called the, the end of time. Oh, yeah? Which is the worst thing you can do to a multiplayer game ever. Imagine you creating this Please unstoppable... <laughs> I'm just going to say this also so other people can learn it. This is a... This is the most ultimate thing you can do. Uh, because uh, you create an empire that for 50 years get double output for everything. Unity, energy, military strength, uh, science, uh, mineral production. But after that, it all falls apart. And the bigger your empire is, the, mo the more of a monster you let you return. Oh. All of your empire will die. It, your, and you will be left with one size, one generic size planet that is called the, the Exile. And the, what happens to the rest of your planet, it will be taken over by by uh, some story things, uh, by this by the Shroud, uh, oh. an evil deity from the Shroud. And that, imp uh, that empire will seek to destroy the entire world. And it's almost impossible to kill. It's an, uh, and the, to make it matters worse, it's an in-game crisis that doesn't count as a crisis. Oh. They can have two prices with that. And the bigger your empire were before it fell, the stronger the boss is. Oh joy. We are talking we are talking to the to the amount where it has over can have up to over two million fleet power strength. Lovely. I think maybe my leader may have been making it expensive because as soon as my Empress died, it went dropped from like eight hundred minerals down to five hundred minerals. Uh, no, that was your Neo Impress doing it cheaper. If you click on the uh, government tab and then uh, look at your Impress, it should have a, uh, like... Um, she's it's... warlike, and she's also an industrialist. Yeah, if you hover over, you can see what uh, it does. Yeah, warlike means is weapons damage and army damage. Uh, she also gives us more minerals. She doesn't make She doesn't make anything else cheaper, she just makes everything more efficient. Oh god, we need to declare a war on Oh, because cause her modifiers, yeah. the agenda modifiers, right. Fleet expansion. Her agenda is fleet expansion. Ship cost, ship upkeep, and ship build speed. Alright, uh, so we're declaring war? We're doing this now? Yeah, because uh, both of them are either equivalent or inferior. You decide which one to take and get your army ready. Alright, contacts. Uh, let's let's go with the Evandari one because it's, they've, they've got territory where you don't want them to have territory. Yes. Alright, let's do it. Let's declare war before the end of this episode. Let's go, 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 go! <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure how to, how to invite people, so I'm just going to fiddle a bit around with it. Um, I believe you just go... Yeah. Declare war and you can... But the thing is, I don't know if... Oh. You can invite if... attackers. So I can ah, invite you. They are good. Uh, I just thought that it would add automatically activate since I've only done a uh, coin wars with other people in the uh, infections yeah. Fair operations. Yep. Is there any land you want from them? Nope. Yeah, I'm just, going north. So you... I, I basically just consigning Maltics and, and the Sacrosanct Evandari Commonwealth to you. I, I'll probably go north and just take over a whole bunch of planets up there, like the Hantax Slayers. I'll probably get rid of it at some point right now I'm focused on like I guess exploring and making sure that I have how can I build stuff around you a barren world yes I don't have any minerals okay right cool but that I believe is indeed so we're just declaring war now uh, I'm just looking through uh, and seeing if I'm picking some stupid provinces on Earth. I probably am. Alright. Like, ask uh, 
Uh... While you mess with that, I'm going to end the episode right here. That's all we got time for, ladies and gents, today. My name is Gambler. We're joined by Roxas. It's Stellaris. We'll see you next time. Bye.